you for staying with us here on Mature Living. We have a great program planned out for you, a lot of important educational information. And so we want to talk a little bit today about, about assisted living, facilities, community living. Um, and, and so we've invited someone that we just met, Artis Covington. Yes, and the name is Artis, isn't it? Yes, ma'am, Artis Covington, Artis. Very good, and so you are a senior care consultant. Um, you're a certified senior advisor, uh, and, and this is interesting, I love this, Care Patrol. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we'd like to know uh, about you personally and how you got involved with the Care Patrol, uh, this organization that you, you're heading and, and trying to help our community and trying to help our families, our seniors. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, well, thank you. First, it was a pleasure being here and, and meeting you. I've uh, watched the show often, and so uh, I'm very excited to be here to share this opportunity. Um, so Care Patrol, um, in 2000, 2020, when we had in the height of the pandemic, I was uh, a, sort of a casualty of, uh, of COVID in regards to uh, uh, job loss, and so I didn't really want to go back into the uh, corporate world. But uh, I was caring for my parents. My father was a caregiver for my mother, and so actually uh, he was hospitalized. And um, so we sort of had to jump into action and, and be a caregiver for both of them. And uh, it, so it sort of thrusted me into that area and I didn't um, necessarily want to go back into the corporate world. Um, but as I started learning and, and care, caring for your parents, you know, you really don't know what you don't know until you're thrown into the fire into a situation that way. And uh, so this opportunity did arise during that time. Uh, so I believe it was a blessing at the time because, and so I was able to learn and this opportunity arise. And uh, so I started to uh, take that opportunity, um, learn while I was in the fire because when you have to try to care give for your parents or do something along those lines, uh, you start to learn a lot. And uh, so this just sort of fell in line with that. And so what Care Patrol is, it's uh, we're a senior uh, uh, placement organization and also a senior advisory uh, uh, company. And basically what we do is we help families uh, find assisted living, uh, memory care, independent living, and sort of in-home care. And we just try to help navigate um, these families and their, uh, um, their loved ones through this long-term care process. And sometimes we don't even know the difference between some of these uh, facilities. And so we, we know what we know about our parents and what their needs are, and the, actually their capacity, their um, the types of things that they can do right. and the types of things that they cannot do. So tell us a little bit about, and that's interesting how you came across uh, running this company. You're the owner of, of, the, uh, of the organization. Yes, I am. It's excellent, and uh, I noticed you were at the Senior Expo and uh, making contact with the community, and that's really, really good. So wh what are the activities of daily living? And there's some other acronyms that maybe you've included in our list here for to talk a little bit about. Yeah, so. Uh, they're called it, ADLs, right? They're called <laughs> ADLs, and, and, I, and I thought it was just fitting that I wanted to talk about that because, again, when we were, there in the health, if you ever spent time in a healthcare facility or a healthcare uh, um, environment, whether it's your doctors, a hospital, uh, you may have come across and you've heard those terms. And that's what I've heard those terms when I was, again, my father was in hospital and I've heard these terms. And uh, they were talking about, uh, you know, these ADLs. And, and uh, so you may have heard your nurse, you may have heard your doctors talk about that. And what ADLs is, it's an acronym, or it stands for uh, Activities of Daily Living, okay? And um, they're very important. And basically what Activities of Daily Living, um, there are basic uh, activities and tasks that we perform mm. every day um, to, to, for our lives to help ourselves and, and to help others. And it's uh, very important, and these are, they're broken up into two categories, to categorize in two areas. One would be called basic activities of daily living, with basic activity of daily livings. And then you also have instrumental activities of daily living. And uh, 
What are yeah. some of the examples? Well, so the basic activities of daily living are going to be functions such as, um, so when we get up in the morning, we perform these every day. So we get up in the morning and- Just getting out of bed Just getting something. out of the bed, yes, <laughs> getting out of the bed. So when we get out of the bed, uh, one of them maybe is transferring, maybe a transferring. So I have to get out of bed and either move myself into a chair or move myself into uh, uh, or, or, or the bathroom. Uh, yeah, uh, bathroom there. So I have to walk. So transferring is one of them. Walking is another. I may now get up. I'm going to go to the restroom. So I can we need to walk to the restroom now. And walking, um, I may need assisted device to help walking. But I'm so ambulating is one. Whether it's with the walker or a wheelchair. But as long as I can get to a point or a place uh, without. Um, uh, a lot of assistance in there. It's, I, I'm still able to do that, okay. but being able to walk. So once I get in the restroom, I need to be able to, you know, toileting. Can I get off there and, and toilet myself, you know, in restrooms, um, incontinence types needs. Um, while you're in the restroom, can you, grooming is another. So grooming, can I uh, groom myself? Can I shave? Can I uh, shower. do my hair? Then showering. Showering is another basic. So these are uh, showering another, you know, being able to clean myself and bathe myself. So mm -hmm. these are basic activities of daily living. Uh, eating. Can I feed Cooking. myself and, and swallow myself? So these are basic activities they living that we have to do because they, they do ourselves. The yeah. other side of it is what we call instrumental activities of daily living. So the instrumental activity, there are activities and tasks um, that help support these basic activities that they're living. So um, they, act, um, they require a little higher level of um, mental complex thinking okay. and planning. Mm -hmm. So, but we, these are tasks though that they also can be delegated off. So for instance, um, instrumental activity day living will be something such as uh, one of the big ones you see is medication management. Oh, yeah. Can I, uh, take my medicine or uh, track, read it, hard keep, to track, keep track, track yes, or, or, or sort them out. I go can by the these? color. <laughs> yes, yeah, and sort them out from there. Uh, can I, uh, um, you know, because I, I can feed myself, but now I need to, can I go to the grocery store? I need to go shopping. Uh, can I get there? Can I, do I have transportation? Can I drive there? Yeah. Uh, can, uh, so. um, can I manage my bills? Yes. Um, can I Big do bills. cleaning around the home? Uh, can I clean cooking my home also? and then cooking? Yes, can it, meal preparation. Can I prep on that? So those are that. So, uh, and I'm glad you explained that, that because when we hear it from the nurses or the attendants or the uh, doctors, we, we, we understand what they're talking about and, and that's something that we can evaluate in ourselves. Yes. As we decline, if there's decline in, in those kinds of things, very, very important. But there's also another topic, the independent living and the assisted living. What's the difference between those facilities? Oh, thank you. Uh, that's perfect because that segue goes into um, when we're talking about independent living um, and assisted living, these ADLs that I'm talking about, they have direct inf you know, impacts in those two uh, topics. So independent living is uh, just that you have functionality or you're able to do things at a high level so you in f physical activity uh, so you may um, be living at home um, maybe with your spouse or with your family and you're functioning um, with either all the ADLs and, and some of these uh, instrumental you're, you're functioning at that level um, but then it starts to independent living could take on a different connotation in regards to um, let's say with your age and you say you're, you're between 55 and 60 you may want to uh, start moving into a um, age demographic uh, community, mm -hmm. um, um, maybe 55 plus type community. And so you're, you're living in there and you may, there's, you're living, you're functioning high, but you're now in a demographic okay. there. So that's the uh, independent sides of it. You're not necessarily, it's, it's they're geared towards um, um, instrumental help of activity, but you're still functioning high. Assisted living, on the other hand, is uh, it's a licensed, the communities they are licensed by the state, but it's just that you're needing assistance with those basic ADLs yes. that I've talked about, where there may be some caregivers that are helping you to help move and transfer you, to help you maybe even feeding or help you walk or something. So there's caregivers and they're assisting you with those basic ADLs and stuff. So that's what assisting usually for national. And there's also, you mentioned regulations. Uh, the Texas state uh, regulations are very important. They do regulate these 
uh, facilities? Yes, so the term assisted living, and, and they're gonna be regulating. So uh, a good thing, you know, I found out, in order to use that term in your business or in a provider to use assisted living, especially here in Texas and, and, uh, and even also in New Mexico, uh, you have to be licensed by the state of Texas. And so these are rules and regulations that they, they're, they're required to follow uh, in, into there. So as we talked about independent living, there are communities um, that are independent living, but those are not regulated they're not. because they're, they're not designed to help you. They're not helping you with your basic yeah. ADLs with yes. theirs. They're just, they're there to provide a service. They help you with your IADLs. Yeah. So maybe you're just, you know, you're, you're just wanting meal planning. But the regu these regulations are, are for assisted living. They do have these uh, licensure types that they're needing. And here in Texas, um, a community is, there's two types of licensures. Um, they have a type A uh, and a type B. And so these type A communities, um, again, is th they're all designed in how they're able to evacuate these uh, residents out of a community. And so the type A is a licensure of, of the type of individuals that the residents that they can admit. And that's gonna be based off of those ADLs. Yes. Now, how, how do you as a care advisor, a senior care advisor, get involved with the well, families what, and making decisions and finding the right place, placement? Well, one thing I place in two capacities. One is in, at, a, at a point of discharge where we help uh, 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 discharge planners and, and um, it, you know, that are working there to help plan and coordinate care um, for families that are post-discharge. And so they're at the point of crisis. And so sometimes they may not necessarily be go home. And so sometimes, you know, at that time we, um, they're, you know, I'm trying to, I help try to help families and we're educating them or uh, guiding them in what's next. Okay. What do we do? What's, what's next? Where do we go from here? Because now I've just been thrown this uh, situation and um, we don't know exactly what to do, or I may have a, a list here, and so how do I know what to choose, or how do I know if this is gonna give me the right level of care? Because in this, you know, you may, you, not everything looks the same, and not everyone addresses the, the regulations sort of the same. So. And so do they contact you? How can they get a hold of you uh, to, to find out how your services operate and how, how you provide the services? Sure. And is there a charge? No. The, the great answer for that. No, great question. For that. We don't um, charge for our services because we are free service to the community and, um, and, and patients and their families and their loved ones because the way we're compensated is through the providers that are in the, the network that's around us. So uh, we're compensated through them. And so that allows us to be a free service to the community at, at that point. Um, the way that I could be contacted is through, uh, we have a telephone number there and also we have a website there. So. Um, my contact number is 915-703-7238. Um, and also I have an email address is A. Covington, and I know it's not a common name, but C-O-V-I-N-G-T-O-N, at carepatrol.com. Very good. And then I understand there's a blog of where people in our community can continue to learn. Uh, tell me about that blog. Yeah, so Care Patrol, what we do, and we are a national placement organization, but I'm locally owned here. And so across the nation, we have, uh, there's um, subject, we have subject matter experts. And so there, we have podcasts, and these podcasts talks about many of these topics that we're talking about that are, um, are very uh, imperative to the um, senior community and how things, it can be finances, uh, it could be uh, these ADLs versus IADLs, um, difference between assisted living and, and skilled okay. nursing and different topics. And you know, we think we know it all, but we certainly don't, mm -hmm. and we want to invite you back some other time on some other topics and, and to see how you're doing in the community. Thank and you. thank you for being here on With Your Living. We hope to invite you back. Thank you, my pleasure. Nice okay. meeting you. And so we've been talking with Artis Covington, who is the owner of Care Patrol, and um, the, he's a certified senior advisor. And we'll be back with more guests here on With Your Living. See you then. Hello, I'm Mary Yanez, director of the Senior Adult Program and your host for Mature Living. You know, this show has been ongoing for over 30 years, and so we want you to watch. Of course, we come on EPCC TV throughout the week. On Sundays, we're on KCOS, that public channel 13. And so we also want to remind you 
that we are on YouTube. Just visit EPCC TV on YouTube and you'll be able to see many of our shows and interviews that we've run over the year. See you then. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? Do you feel neglected or unloved? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are not alone. Al-Anon and al can, can help. help. Call 1-866-200-0223 or visit al anonorg We continue our show here on Mature Living with some more great information. And maybe you don't know what diversity means. So we've invited uh, Luz de los Reyes, and she is an administrative associate with the diversity program here at the El Paso Community College. And as you can imagine, a whole program about diversity, activities throughout the year, and in particular right now, we are right in the middle of Hispanic Heritage uh, Month, which starts September the 15th and it ends October 15th. So we want to bring you some good information and some of the things that have already passed. Thank you for being with us and glad to meet you, mm -hmm. um, Luz. Uh, tell me a little bit about what is diversity, first of all? Thank you, work. and nice to meet you as well, Ms. Daniels. Thank you for uh, the opportunity for having me here. And um, so let me tell you a little bit of our, uh, of our program. What is it that we do? Uh, diversity. When people hear uh, diversity, uh, people right away, they think that it's uh, um, religion or ethnicity, only those two. But it's beyond more than just the ethnicity or religion. It is uh, a lot of things. It is sizes, um, it is different colors, different uh, points of view, different ideas that uh, uh, people bring together and wants to have an inclusivity. And um, what, I, uh, what we'd like to give an example always is, um, what is it that we need to make a cake? And uh, so when we ask that, People say, okay, well, uh, you need eggs, you need butter, you need flour, milk, and all those ingredients make a cake, right? Yes. And the best part of it is to enjoy it together. That's right. So, uh, yes, uh, diversity means uh, a lot of different things, and the uh, inclusivity is to um, everything that uh, makes that diverse at once. <laughs> and so we want our college and our institutions and many organizations to, to be inclusive and to uh, have a diverse staff, a diverse faculty, a student body as well. And so you've won awards, right, your department? Right, be open-minded too. And just to give an example too of how the college could be diverse, um, when students, when they go to class, there's uh, um, the desk. There's desk with uh, the right hand with, oh, the, yes. with right for right-handed, but there's also for left-handed. So that's a, just a, one example of what the college is, how diverse it is to offer the students and also the community, right? So, uh, so it could be many things that sometimes we don't think about it, but uh, like those little things, those details like the left-handed or uh, right-handed, there are things that people are different. Yes, and mm -hmm. also the Center for Students with Disabilities that assist students that have uh, uh, limited sight and hearing and uh, you know just so many uh, different disabilities and that's also inclusivity isn't it I'm has correct. to do with diversity yes well uh -huh. tell me a little you just had an event and it, it was the um, the Hispanic Heritage Fiesta tell me a little bit about how that went <laughs> Right. Uh, we just had our Hispanic Heritage Fiesta last week, and after being two years of pandemic, uh, being virtual, we finally got the opportunity to celebrate in person. So it was great to have interactions with students, with the community also, um, and we had a lot of entertainment. Uh, we had uh, uh, Carla Mariscal as our host the day of the event. Yes. 
we had a uh, Chepi Orduña. He was the keynote speaker for the event, and he's a word spoken artist. Uh, he's from Laredo, Texas, and he came to visit our town to celebrate uh, with us the Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, we also nominated two mentors, uh, which were um, Dana Muñoz. She's a faculty instructor here at the college, and also Dr. Andres Muro. He is uh, the director for community education program. Yes. So we like to highlight our people, our faculty. Uh, they have done so many great things for the college, also for the community. Um, and they give the opportunity to others to, uh, to highlight them. So um, that's how we uh, nominate and select the mentors for. Uh, mm -hmm. And the word fiesta. Of course, that had to do with entertainment. I understand you had a Norteño group. Oh, uh, yes. That got you all <laughs> dancing. <laughs> yes, yes. At Valle Verde, right? It was in the uh, Valle Verde It was the Verde Valle Camps. Verde campus uh, cafeteria annex. And I even stand up to dance. Okay, uh, good. Everyone stand up at the end to dance Perfect. with the Norteño. You know, uh, and it's our, it's our culture. It's our colors. Yes. And uh, to be proud of. We had a lot of entertainment. We had a... Um, we had singers uh -huh. uh, that they were singing uh, bolero songs and you know uh, tango romantic songs at the beginning. We also had a Brazilian uh, martial art presentation. Uh, their name uh, is uh, Capoeira El Paso. So um, they gave a, a very good uh, presentation on what they do for their martial arts. We had uh, also uh, Da Vinci School who came with the, their mariachi uh, wow. class. Uh, beautiful. And it was beautiful how they sing, how they perform. And also uh, the folklorico, I love folklorico dances. From, it's so beautiful to see uh, how they dance with those big dresses oh and very gosh. colorful. Absolutely. It was just beautiful. And, um, we had a lot of entertainments. We also gave EPCC students uh, the opportunity to sing, and they oh, were also- Open uh, mic. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Everyone could come in and, and sing with us. And they also had some uh, karaoke outside. Um, inside the annex was the uh, performances, but also the student clubs uh, oh. were outside. Uh -huh. Recruiting. And they, yes, recruiting. Uh, it was a great opportunity for Super. EPCC programs to be out there and uh, promote their program right. and yeah. also to recruit students. Um, so mm -hmm. I was just going to ask, how are you going to continue through this month of celebration uh, of Hispanic heritage? Are there any upcoming events? Yes, uh, it doesn't end there. So uh, next week we will be having the Hispanic Heritage Month readings, which is uh, a group of students that uh, we bring together and we give them the opportunity to read and share with us a little bit of the literature that the, they would like to share. We give them about two minutes each and we're gonna be giving also um, a book uh, that it was written by e Jasmine Ramirez, which is a EPCC faculty instructor here at the college too. And the top uh, best two readers will win her book. So. Wonderful, mm -hmm. Jasmine Ramirez, beautiful. Yes. I've, uh -huh. I've heard of that professor. Yes, yes, she's it's great. Beautiful. She's so wonderful. And we will be having the readings uh, next week at Northwest Campus Library. That will be October 4th. And uh, the Rio Grande Campus, uh, October 5th. Very good. So mm -hmm. there's a big event, the White Cane, uh, what is it called, White Cane Safety. Tell me a little bit about that and when is that going to happen? Coming up too, we will be also having the White Cane Safety Day. Um, this year we're getting together with Center Student with Disabilities and um, we're going to be having the White Cane Safety Day on October 15th. Uh, that event is all, it's for people that uh, with uh, have problems with their vision, uh, blindness, you know. So we want to highlight everyone. Uh, and even it's not only for uh, people that just could, they can just hear or see, but there's also events for everyone. Like for example, um, we're gonna be having the White King Safety Day uh, for people who have uh, problems with their vision. Mm -hmm. So everyone uh, has the opportunity to celebrate and to have their event. That's when uh, the college is diverse and, and offer inclusivity to the college, you very know, good. to the community. I know that you are in the department, very active right now, and, <laughs> and uh, Dr. Um, 
that's in charge right now. Who's in charge of your department at this point? Uh, right now, we're under the direction of Dr. Andrew Peña. He's the executive director for Human Resources. Um, and and yeah. we've been uh, under him for over a year now when uh, my old director left, uh, Olga Chavez. But yes. And you know, well, I, I must mention this. You always work with committees. It right. doesn't take one person or two in the office to, to, t to take on these beautiful events uh, uh, to promote diversity. And so you work with community. How can people call you to volunteer? Where do they call? Well, they could visit our website, epcc.edu slash services slash diversity. We always ask for extra hands, you know, uh, because a big event, it's, uh, it requires a lot of people, a lot to do, you know. It's, and, and we also have our, our committees. And uh, we also open uh, positions for a committee if they want to be part of us, if they want to be part of our volunteers, they are welcome. We also work with uh, faculty members. Mm -hmm. If uh, they're going to be uh, going towards their tenure binder, we can always work with them. And um, if they show us and they prove us that they want to be with us and they help us, we offer them with a, a certificate, with a letter if they ever need one. And students mm -hmm. as well, because yes. uh, mm -hmm. it's good to be well-rounded mm -hmm. and to uh, to have that community mindset mm -hmm. to help community and, and join hands with everybody else. We right. want to congratulate you all for oh, all the awards you. you've won over the years <laughs> uh, through the diversity program, and we want you to continue and wish you the best um, oh, thank you. Uh, thank for your department, and thank you for what you all do. Thank Appreciate you, Ms. Janice. Thank you for your time, too. Okay, mm -hmm. and we'll give that phone number as well. Right. What uh -huh. is your phone number over there in the um, office? It will be 915-831-7897. Very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us, and uh, we wish you well with your upcoming events, and we'll Thank watch you. what you're doing all year round. <laughs> and we we'll invite everyone. <laughs> Very good. Okay, so we'll be back uh, probably next week because we're gathering some more interesting guests to, sh to share with us what they're doing in the community. And we'll see you all next week.